Hello students, glad to be back with you again. Today I'll be taking class 10 social science, class 10 social science and today we'll be discussing about trade and globalization, okay? Class 10 assess trade and globalization. This is chapter 4, okay? Chapter 4, that means the last chapter for unit 1. So, trade and globalization. And I'm sure you will find it interesting, okay? Because here, we are going to discuss about the whole world, okay? What happened to the world, etc., etc., okay? So, talking about globalization. Now, when we talk about globalization, globalization means interconnect uh, interconnected or, or connectedness of people or in other words okay now i'm sure you must have heard about people saying that the world is getting smaller okay the world is getting smaller now why do you think the world is getting smaller because physically physically the world is not getting smaller the reason why people say that the world is getting smaller or why they say the world is shrinking, okay? That means it is because of the interconnectedness of people. And this interconnectedness of people is possible because of communication, okay? Communication, transportation, and so on. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss about that, okay? Globalization and also to do with trade. Now, when we talk about globalization, okay, the definition is clearly written there in your textbook. That is in the tenth line. You can underline that definition. Okay, globalization is the increasing interconnection of people and places as a result of advances in transport. Okay, so that is the definition of globalization. Now, many a times, what your students does is, when this question is asked, at the back of the chapter, okay, in the important terms, there, globalization, there it is written, free movement of goods and capital. And many a times, you write this question. Now, this is also correct, but when you write the definition, okay, or if it is asked in the exam, especially metric or in your exam, Please look at the marks, whether it is for two marks or whether it is for one mark. Okay, if it is for one mark, then you can write the definition that is written there at the back. But if it is being asked for two marks, then you know that your answer needs to be long. So you have to go with the right definition. Okay, so globalization is the increasing interconnection of people and places as a result of advances in transport, okay, communication and information technologies that causes political, economic and cultural convergence. So that is to do with globalization. Okay? Now, when we say interconnection of people or when we say the world is getting smaller, okay, the reason is, as I've said, it's because of transportation, communication, etc. Now, those days, okay, in the ancient days, people used to take lots of many days in order to travel from one place to another place. I'm sure some of you, you must have seen that Jackie Chan's movie also, which is entitled Around the World in 80 Days, isn't it? So, they took 80 days to go around the world, but now, you know that if you have the flight connected, then within a day or so, you can travel from here to Europe and so on. So all this shows that the world is getting smaller. This is the reason why people say the world is getting smaller or all these are because of interconnected of people or interconnection of people, which is due to communication, transportation and so on. Or for example, if you want to talk, let's say you have a friend in America and you want to talk to them. Now, within a second or so, or within one minute or so, you can do that. That is possible now. So all these are because of the technologies, okay? 
the technologies that are developing and all these are leading to globalization so here in this chapter we are going to discuss about all those things okay now the next topic is we call it as the silk road okay we call it as the silk route or the silk route route or route means we are talking about this that is a road okay it is a road so when we talk about a silk road don't think that the road is plastered with silk or anything okay it is not that but the name is given as the silk road or silk road because during that century okay during those century we all know about Chinese silk. The Chinese, they are very famous for their silk. Okay? Chinese silk is one of the most expensive silk in the world. And what the Chinese used to do is, in order to transport or in order to sell, okay? in order to sell their silk to the outside world, they used to travel through a particular road. And so that road came to be called as the Silk Road, okay, because of the Chinese silk. Then this Silk Road, it also became very important because this connect, okay, this road, it connect Europe with Asia, okay, it connect Europe with Asia. And people, especially the missionaries, the missionaries, the traders and all, all of them, they traveled through this route in order to go for uh, from one continent to another continent. So that is also another reason why Silk Road is considered very important, okay? Then, later on, in the 19th century, there came some changes, okay? Changes came into being people or countries got more advanced, so to say, more developed. And so changes also came up during the 19th century. And here, talking about trade okay this is to do with trade so here economies they divided they divided trade into three parts everything is written there in your textbook okay those are we call it as the three types of movement or flows now you turn to page 46 uh, sorry 44 the first paragraph okay in the first paragraph the three flows are written clearly there the three types of flows or movement and this is to do with trade okay so the first one is it says that flow of trade or trade in goods so flow of trade means we are talking about people doing business okay countries doing business with one another where there is flow of trading or flow of trade so that is the first flow then the second flow is it says flow of labor labor we are talking about the workers okay where people are migrating to another place in search of work so the second flow is called flow of labor and that is to do with people migrating from one place to another place in order to get job okay then the third flow is, we call it as the flow of capital. Capital means the money that you need in order to start something, okay? The money that you need in order to start something. For example, let's say you wanted to start, a, open a small sweets shop, okay? Now, to go for that, to open your shop, first what you have to do is, you need to buy different kinds of sweets right and you have to stack it up there in your shop then only you'll be able to open your shop so the money okay the money that you need in order to first buy those sweets that is called capital okay the money that you need in order to start something so that is called capital so that is the third flows of movement so the first flow is flow of trade Okay, where countries are doing business with one another. The second flow is flow of labor, where people are migrating to another place in search of works. Then the third flow is, we call it as flow of capital, where people, that is the business people, they go to another place 
in order to start a shop okay in order to open their shop or in order to do new business so those are called as the three flows of movement and this became very important during the 19th century okay now when we talk about this uh, flow of labor okay this flow of labor in another words that is also known as we call it as indentured labor okay indentured labor where people they work in a particular place without i mean like and they live in under a very miserable condition okay they live under very miserable condition it sounds like or in one way we can say it is the same as the act which was introduced by the britishers we call it the, as the england immigration act where the workers those who are working in the plantation they cannot go out from the plantation if they want to go out they have to get permission but the problem was even if they asked for permission it was rarely given to them so indentured labor is also something like that okay where the workers they live under a very miserable condition so all these were practiced during the 19th century okay now coming to the next topic which is called as the post war recovery now here post war recovery this is mainly to do with british okay mainly to do with the british what happened here in the post war recovery was now after the war ended or let's say when the war was going on we all know that in the first world war and the second world war the britishers they took part in both the wars from the beginning okay in the first world war also they entered the war from the beginning and so what happened was when on one side the britishers they were fighting the war on the other side many countries okay many countries were developing their industries and when you look at british we all know that before the wars okay before the wars british was considered as the richest country in the world okay the richest and the strongest and the reason was because she has lots of colonies under her control the britishers they had they have lots of colonies under their control and because of having so many colonies again they were able to get lots of raw material and because of getting so much raw material it led to the industrial revolution okay industrial revolution which we have discussed in your lower classes industrial revolution means change of labor from hand to machine that means before things were being done by men but because of industrial revolution now things are being done by machine so that is called as industrial revolution okay so the britishers what they did was on one side they were busy fighting in the war whereas on the other side other countries those who were not directly involved in the war they were busy developing their industries so once the war ended okay once the war ended the britishers they had to face a very stiff competition because by now many countries okay many countries have also developed their industries so the britishers they face a very stiff competition okay then another point is when the war was going on the britishers they were involved in the war and what they did was the britishers they took loan from america okay they took money from america now the war had ended so now the problem is war had ended and so the britishers now they had to repay back the loan they have to give back the money to america the money that they have taken so on one side their economy is affected because they were involved in the war plus they were not the only country who has industry now all many other countries have also come up with their industries and on the other side they have to pay the money to the americans so this also face made the british economy suffer more okay they had a lots of difficulty then because of the war okay 
it led to we call it as economic boom. Now, economic boom means because of the war, okay, it resulted in large increase. There was a large increase in demand, okay, people demanding different kind of things. It was a large increase in demand, then thousands and millions of people also became unemployed, okay, millions of people became unemployed and regarding the production also, there was also a great increase in production. But here what happened was, okay, one thing you need to realize is the war was going on. Industries, many industries have come up. Now, what these industries were doing was, they were developing only war goods. Got it? The industries, they were developing only war goods. War goods means they were developing only those goods that were being used or that are supposed to be used in the war. So, it can be to do with the uniforms of the soldiers, okay, or their shoes, that is the boots, or even to do with the, all those canned food, okay, which the soldiers are using in the war. So, all the uh, sorry, the industries, they were going in for the production of only war goods and war had ended. So, now the war had ended, the industries, they cannot sell their goods. And it, so, because of not being able to sell their goods, they cannot get profit. And if they don't get profit, they again cannot manufacture another goods. So, all these made the industries to be shut down, okay? And thus, it increased the unemployment problem. So, that is also one feature of the post-war recovery, okay? Now, what happened was regarding the Americans. The Americans though, the war was going on in the First World War also same thing, second also same. The war, the First World War, it broke out in 1914, it ended in 1919. The Britishers, they took part from the beginning, whereas the Americans, okay, the Americans, they did not take part in the First World War from the beginning, okay. They took part or they got involved or they got into the war only in 1917. Why in 1917? Because the, uh, uh, the Germans, okay, the Germans, they had destroyed a British ship and there were some American passengers on that British ship. So, the American passengers were also killed, so this made the Americans enter the war in order to take revenge. So, what happened here was, the Americans, they were able to retain their economy, okay? And after the war ended, what they decided to do was, they decided to go for, we call it as, rise of mass production. That is, the Americans, now they decided to go for mass production. Mass means big, huge, enormous, okay? So, they decided to go for mass production. And in this, one is to do with vehicles, okay? Cars. Now, what happened was, Sir Hen or Henry Ford. Henry Ford, he is the owner, okay? He is the owner of the Ford Company. Ford Company, that is to do with vehicles, okay? I'm sure you have seen lots of vehicles uh, the Ford, regarding the Ford vehicles, okay? Even here in Nagaland, okay? So, this man that is the owner of the Ford vehicles, that is Henry, he decided to go for mass production of vehicles. And in trying to do that, he decided to come up with a new system, which we call it as assembly line, okay? Assembly line. Here, assembly line, we are not talking about the students making line in the assembly, okay? Here, how he applied this was everything, okay? Everything was done in sequence, okay? Everything was done in sequence. For example, how they did this was like, uh, let's say, cars, okay? So, they are going in for the manufacture of a car. So, what they will do is in the first station, there will be some engineers, okay? who will be maybe making the body of the car. So, the body of the car will be made and that also it has to be done at a specific time, okay? So, after that time elapsed, all these will be running on a motor. So, after the time elapsed, the motor will start running 
and the body it will go to the next station again and in the next station again some peoples will be there and maybe they will fix up the tires and all okay then after that it will go to another station where they will paint the car then it will go to another station where they may fit in the engine and whatnot okay so everything being done in a sequence that is called assembly line and by introducing this assembly line Sir, uh, Henry Ford he was able to go in for mass production he was able to manufacture thousands and thousands of cars without any uh, time being lost okay so that is to do with assembly line so cars were also developed more okay they went in for mass production then talking about meat okay meat now regarding this meat what they did was okay the americans they also they used to export lots of animals okay? live animals the outside world okay now in doing that what they do or how they did it was all these live animals in order to be transported to another place the live animals if it's to do example a pig okay all the pigs they will be put into the ship because during those days transportation was to do with ship uh, mainly for big things okay mass production so pigs will be put into uh, onto the ship and they will start sailing and they will be transported to another place now what happened here was since it's a ship we all know that it will be taking time okay and so to go from one continent to another continent let's say it took many days now within that those days what happened is sometimes those animals who are there uh, which are there uh, on the ship in order to be sold to the next play, uh, person what happened is sometimes the animals they used to die okay or sometimes they used to lose weight also so in the first place let's say they weighed 100 kg but after traveling for so many days once they reach the designated place where they are supposed to be sold maybe they lost weight so maybe they may come down to 90 kgs or 95 kgs and whatnot and in that place the owner is going to face problem that is the owner will be losing out his profit okay so what the americans again did was they built we call it as refrigerated fridge so they built big big Refri uh, refrigeration on the ship itself and instead of carrying the live animal okay they used to cut the animal okay they will cut the animal into pieces kill the animal cut the, cut it into pieces and they will put it in the fridge and so since they're put in the fridge we all know that it will not get spoiled so this is how okay they were able to go for mass production and in going in for mass production we all know again they were able to get lots of profit okay but as you know okay because of all these things all the americans they decided to go for mass production and because of this it led to a very very important event which we call as the great depression okay so all this overproduction it led to the great depression okay now talking about this great depression actually it is called as economic okay it is called as economic depression so what happened here was the americans they were going in for mass production there was overproduction okay of agriculture cars were being produced in thousands okay then uh, in transporting all those because of those refrigerated fridge or uh, ship now they were able to carry lots of meat also so all these led to economic depression now economic depression means where the country is facing economic problem okay the country is facing economic problem where their currency comes down okay the currency will uh, the value of the currency will come down so the americans they were facing this and this great depression it broke out in usa okay it broke out in america 
in 1929 okay so this economic depression it broke out in america now as i've said actually it is called as economic depression but now we call it as great depression it came to be called as great depression and the reason why okay the economic depression that broke out in america why it came to be called as the great depression is because the whole world okay the whole world came to be affected with the economic depression that broke out in America okay the economic depression it broke out only in America but then it came to affect the whole world and that is the reason why it came to be called as the great depression okay now now also same thing those days also all the countries okay because uh, and all these are to do with globalization because of countries being interconnected okay people being interconnected so whatever happens in one country it affects the other countries plus the americans during those days many countries they used to take help from america and the americans because of having this facing this economic depression they decided to stop helping other countries even to do with loan that is lending of money many countries they used to take loan from america but now because of the economic depression the americans they decided that they will not be able to give out loan to other countries and because of the american not giving loan to other countries okay, especially the developing countries again the developing countries their economy was affected so everything was interconnected okay so that is the reason why it came to be called as the great depression but okay you will find that because of the great depression again so many things okay so many things came up which we people are enjoying it now the great depression it broke out in 1929 okay and as i've said it broke out in america but because of this great depression the result it was enormous so to say and many good things okay so many good things came out because of the great depression now regarding this great depression as i've said uh, the farmers they went in for more agriculture okay they decided to cultivate more land and all these were to do with we call it as cash crop cash crops means where the farmers are cultivating crops in order to be sold Okay, in order to be sold in the market so that is called cash crops we are not talking about money crops okay or where you plant a money tree or anything so cash crops means the crops that you are planting or cultivating in order to sell it in the market so the american farmers many of the european and the american okay, farmers they went in for the development of cash crops and because of that there was overproduction okay now what happened was the americans they were cultivating all this in order to sell it but there was no buyer people were not buying it and the reason why other countries were not buying it is because they don't have money okay their economy was affected because of the war so many of the countries economy was affected because of the war and so even though they need it okay even though they need the crops they need the food they were unable to buy it and on the other side the americans okay since they were unable to sell their crops it got uh, the all the crops it got spoiled and so what the americans did was they threw it into the sea okay they threw their food into the sea because it got spoiled whereas on the other side millions of people were dying of hunger and so because of that a new system came up and that is the the un they suggested that the rich countries should help the poor countries because from here also we can fight, make out isn't it that is instead of throwing their food into the sea the americans they could have just given it to those people who are dying of hunger right because those people they are dying of hunger because they can't get food and the reason why they can't get food is because they don't have money okay so on the other side as we have discussed just now 
the Americans, they were throwing their food into the sea. So because of that, a new policy came up where the UN, they say that rich countries should help the poor countries, okay? Rich countries should help the poor countries. So that is also one positive outcome of the Great Depression, okay? Then the Great Depression, it also affected India. All the Asian countries also, as I've said, it affected the whole world. So even India, okay? Indian also, they were greatly affected by this Great Depression. The plantation uh, harvest, they cannot sell it, okay? The price of all the commodities, it came down, especially to do with the crops, food crops like wheat and all. All the prices came down. And so because of that, the country's economy was also affected, okay? And at the height of this, at the height of this, the, the, thing, the UN, okay? The UN, they decided that they needed to do something. And so what they decided was, they decided to come up with a new system or they decided to have a meeting, which is called as the Bretton Wood Institution, okay? Bretton Wood Institution. But uh, we are running out of time, so this Bretton Wood Institution, it's quite lengthy, okay? So I hope you'll excuse me, but this Bretton Woods, we will continue with the next class, okay? Bretton Wood, we will continue with the next class. For this class, just now I'll just do some recap, okay? We, have, we were discussing about chapter 4, that is trade and globalization. Globalization means interconnectedness of people or interconnection of people or where we say the world is getting smaller. And all these are because of transportation, communication, and all those new technologies that are coming up, okay? So this is called as globalization. And because of this globalization, what happens in one country, again, the other countries also get affected because we are all interlinked with one another. Then we have also discussed about the uh, Britain, the British, they were involved in the war and because of that their economy was affected and after the war ended they have to face stiff competition from the other countries because those countries who were not involved in the war they were busy developing their industries they also we have discussed then we have also discussed about the three flows of movement flow of trade flow of labor and the flow of capital then we have also discussed about the mass production where the Americans, they decided to go for mass production where Henry Ford, the owner of the Ford company, he introduced this assembly line where everything were being done in sequence. Then we have also discussed about the refrigerated fridge, okay, in order to carry more meat or more animals, so to say, so all these, again, we have discussed that it contributed to the Great Depression. So I hope you were able to understand that much, okay? And as always, please remember to read your textbook. So stay safe and thank you for tuning in.